Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm back here in my favorite filming spot location because guess what? We are here to deliver on a vehicle that you have been asking for. This is it. This is your all new, totally redesigned from top to bottom 2023 BMW M2. But before we get into this new performance version of the mighty M2 badge, let's talk about what's going on here. BMW. Once upon a time in a galaxy far, far away, they didn't even make vehicles. They made airplanes and airplane engines. That goes all the way back to World War I. Now, after World War I, there was a need for some cheaper transportation, and that's when they switched over to motorcycles. And then by 1930s is where we see BMW produce some of their first vehicles. Now, over the years, when you see an M badge on a BMW, you know that that brings that extra motorsports performance because the letter M stands for motorsport. Now, when BMW makes their different models, they have different sizes of vehicles and they use a number to identify each platform. You got the two series, which is what the M2 is based off of. Obviously the three series, four series, so on and so forth. Now, once upon a time, also in another galaxy, I was growing up in the 80s and 90s and I fell in love with the two-door M3. Just the proportions, the way it ran, that straight six power. Over the past few years, remember BMW changed their lineup designation. The M3 is saved for the four-door version of the three series and the M4 is now a two-door performance version. Much larger vehicle, much larger price. But what I wanna find out is if you're looking for the best new performance vehicle and you're not here to spend over $100,000, is the M2 the best for your money? Let's go ahead, let's dive into this Xander Vought Blue M2 and find out. Right off the bat, the color really shows the lines of the M2 and it's one of those ones that it's going to catch your attention and if you think about it red blue and then a lighter blue are the three colors of the BMW Motorsport brand and this light blue really blends in nicely with that badge now at the front end of the business you're going to see an all new shape all new design on the headlight housing, you have that daytime running lamp, which is also your turn signal, as you can see, because we have the hazards on. This is that new design philosophy on their halo. Remember, you go back to the original early days, BMW headlights always used to have a light ring around the headlight, that halo light. This is what we're working with for 2023 on the M2. You have an LED projector beam. The one zonk I have is this. Why do we have a fake vent here? I'm not digging that port, uh, portion of the headlight design, but other than that, I think they hit the nail on the head. Working your way down, I hope you like squares and rectangles because you have this massive squared off air intake, this corner air intake. You can see the heat exchanger peeking from behind. This is gonna help bring cool air for all the inner bits to keep this performance vehicle at the proper temp very unique to the M2. If you look at an M3 and an M4, much, much different how they did the front end of the design. Let me know how you feel about these corner squared off vents. Now, as we come across the front grill, that iconic design, the kidney grill shape, remember the shape and the design is getting larger and larger with these grills. That was the, really the big controversy with the M3 and the M4, which are currently available. On the M2, they took a totally different route. You have a more traditional setup with that kidney grill design, gloss black, horizontal slots, fully functional. We got our M2 badge, you see the light blue? It matches almost perfectly with the blue on this particular M2. We even have our anniversary badge. Love the way they're bringing that nice color and history all in one badge, Bavarian Motor Works. It's been around for decades. Now working our way down, you wanna see open air intake. Look at this lower grill area. You have these massive openings for brake cooling, the heat exchangers, that center radiator, and then of course other heat exchangers that are positioned throughout the front of this vehicle. Like I said, to keep the temps in check. I wish that this was all carbon fiber because 
The gloss black over time, I don't feel like it's gonna wear very well, but like other BMWs, there's nothing stuck on, and I really like that. There's no stuck on splitter. Everything is all blended into the front fascia. We do have a forward facing license plate because as you can see, this is registered in California. Um, but here in Florida, you'd be able to rip that right off and have a cleaner look. Now, when you get up onto the hood, you get a little bit of a bulge. It's a bulge plateau in the center, nice and clean. Everything coasts right towards those eight pillars. And then as we kind of come around the bend, what are we working with? Wheel and tire setup. Check out our BMW Motorsport wheels. Love the style. It's kind of like a multi-spoke star design. It's gonna be a little bit of a bear to clean, but you know what? It's always a labor of love. Now, if you zoom on in, you'll see that we have gloss black, machine aluminum, and we're talking about, when we look at this wheel size, you're looking at a 19 inch wheel. Look at the calipers. That freaking six piston, almost like a blueberry blue on the caliper with the M logo. You have ginormous rotors, larger than the German pizza that you ate last night, cross drilled, two piece, that's gonna cut down on heat buildup and also increase that rotating mass, or I should say low, lower the rotating mass to increase steering feel. But I love the way they got the BMW badge and Steven actually made me move the car forward and backwards until we had the BMW logo totally centered, just like that. So that's for you, Steven. Let me know in the comment section if you like how we did that, if Steven was worth it was worth it having me move the car back and forth, but you have adaptive suspension, all four corners, newly tuned for this M2. Um, and of course we have the, the rubber wrapped around the wheels are those Michelin Pilot Sport Forest tires. Give us some nice grip. And if you're wondering, well, Joe, what's the size? 275 up front, 35 series sidewall. I think it looks freaking damn good. Now, as we come down the side fender, I'm gonna actually have Steven swing around and show how we have this flared fender style to it no vents stuck on nothing fake no badges just nice and clear because we don't need no stinking badges stuck all over the fenders because they look that good another thing that bmw does so well is they sculpt the arrow into their side mirror so you can see that great work with aerodynamic efficiency obviously color matched on the mirror caps and you have your led turn signals up top we got a full carbon roof carbon fiber roof so not just for style, that's gonna help cut about eight pounds off the top of the vehicle, which lowers the center of gravity. I guess the big zonk is no sunroof. To me, I don't care. Let me know down in the comment section if you care that there's no sunroof on this M2. I do like the way they did the door handles. Nice and flush, you can get your fingers in there, you don't have to worry about it popping out. I wanna drop down with Steven and show off that lower sill. Look how far it extends out. It's crazy just how far the fenders and that lower sill extend off the side of the car, especially this part right here. This is one of my favorite parts. It really reminds me of the BMW M3s that used to race in the IMSA series back in the 90s when they were the two-door M3s and they had that nice flared out look. And this really, is almost like a throwback to those early M3s. So if you've been wanting that ultimate driving machine and you don't want such a big, huge vehicle, the proportions of this M2 are the chef's kiss, spot on the money. Now on the rear wheels, you are gonna get a little bit wider wheel and tire, 285. This is available only in a rear wheel drive. We have an electronic limited slip diff, but more rubber to meet the asphalt to give us that grip. And then as we swing around, before we get to the back, I wanna have Steven show that Flender. I, I wanna wash this car just so I could rub my freaking hands all over it. Damn sexy. They did a great job. LED taillights, full LED. Look at how they did all the nice curves to it. Work your way down, very unique on the style. I like the way they hid the DOT required reflectors in that area on the corner. We got our M2 badge. Nice, clean, color matched on the trunks. Uh, Trunklet spoiler would be nice to have carbon fiber. And that's one of those things I'm sure is gonna be available where you get this in carbon fiber, the lower diffuser, and definitely that front end. I think that would match perfectly with the carbon fiber roof. And then as we drop down, you're gonna have that quad tip exhaust. Nice slash cut, round opening, that black, dark chrome finish on it. 
not really chrome, but a dark aluminum finish to it, going to let that straight six just roar. But since we're speaking of the, six, the straight six, and I'm looking at that amazing diffuser, let's go ahead, let's pop the hood of this M2 and see what's powering right, it. Guys, we got the hood popped. You do have hood struts underneath the hood. Check out the bracing. Not only do you have your strut top mount bracing, but then they tie in the front of the vehicle really to give you a nice rigid structure. Tasteful engine cover with the M badge, BMW M power. But what are we looking at? We're looking at a three liter twin turbo inline six producing 453 horsepower, 406 pound feet of torque. Now, if one of your next door neighbors last year bought one of those M2 CSs, you can laugh at them if you get one of these M2s because guess what? Even though they paid more for that CS, this new M2 has more power. So something to really kind of boast and just let it all hang out when your neighbor's outside waxing his baby, you can let him know you got more power than his M2 CS. Made it to either a six-speed manual, thank you BMW, or eight-speed automatic. Zero to 60 with the eight-speed automatic, 3.5 seconds, quarter mile at 11.9 seconds, top speed 177 miles per hour, MPGs 16 in the city, 24 on the highway, and the vehicle weighs 3,750 pounds. And that's the surprising thing to me because with the M2 being a smaller vehicle, you're still looking at 3,700 pounds. Remember the M3 and the M4, 4,000 pounds plus. The days are long gone from those 1990s M3s, especially with the two doors weighing right around 3,000 pounds. But you know what? We got an M2, M stands for motorsports. That means there's power. Why don't we go ahead, let's fire this up and hear what the power sounds like. guys we are inside this bmw m2 finally i did not give up and i was able to get it for you guys because you guys deserve it now i know you're saying to yourself well joe i'm excited for this m2 i want a smaller performance vehicle things just keep getting bigger bigger and bigger how much is it very good question so remember rear wheel drive there's no all-wheel drive on the M2. This one has the standard seats. You can get performance buckets, but the MSRP on this particular one with the ZF8 speed automatic is right around $69,000. Let's see how it stacks up to what else you could get for the money to the door panels. All new for 2023. Soft touch material. You do have some white contrast stitching right around that midsection, how it curves into the door handle and the armrest. You see the BMW M Motorsport colors? That lights up at night. Very nice and clean with the carbon fiber style. The one thing I'm on the fence about is the indentations, those triangular indentations on the back portion. I wish that they would have brought more of the Motorsport color into the door panel, but still, very clean. We got the Harman Kardon sound system. And then the door pocket is a pretty good size for one Wiener Schnitzel and a nice bottle of IBC root beer. Now going from the door panel to the dash, soft touch material. We do have carbon fiber, which a little bit of silver trim. I'm going to say it once again. I wish they would have used a little bit more of the BMW Motorsport colors, but you do have nice carbon fiber. You slide on in and guess what? You have an all new infotainment system screen set up on this. You're looking at, believe it or not, a 14.9 inch infotainment system. It's got a little bit of a concave curve to make it driver focused. This is the main screen where you can slide through all the different setups. And I like the way everything has this like angle. They did that because of the BMW motor, Motorsport logo. You look at the Motorsport logo, it's got everything on an angle. You could go into your setup, set everything up exactly how you want it, and you could change it from comfort to sport, so on and so forth. 
You got your dual climate controls. I think the big zonk for me is that all the climate controls are in the screen. No actual physical buttons for the climate control. And another big zonk, only heated seats. No ventilated seats in this almost $70,000 vehicle. I go back to home, obviously, you got your navigation. I'm gonna hit the My Mode button, and that's gonna allow you to go from road to sport to track. Activate track mode, that's gonna shut off all the electronic nannies, and I like the way it makes the screen shut off so you could focus when you're doing your track day very, very easily. And there we are right back again. Let me show you reverse. Backup camera, nice clear resolution with the trajectory. I just wish it took more. You got 14.9 inches, you've been blessed. Use all 14.9 inches if you have it. And I would just like it to go, like slide this here and then make that a little bit wider. But other than that, very easy to use, very intuitive, and it just allows you to feel comfortable going through this. It's just, when you're driving, to do the climate is a little bit of a bear. I'm just gonna throw that out there. Now, as we work our way down, we got more of that carbon fiber, some gloss black. This area, I've noticed when I'm driving it, creates a lot of glare. So that's one of the things that I wish they would have gave me flat finish carbon fiber, the dry weave car carbon fiber, not the, the gloss veneer finish on the carbon fiber. But other than that, very clean, very BMW-esque. You do have a real volume knob, which is nice. Somebody dumped a bucket of carbon fiber, a bucket of carbon fiber all over the center console area. Hit the button, open sesame, two cup holders, a 12 volt, you better run a radar detector unless you have a get out of jail free card, USB-A, wireless charging, and of course we have our BMW M colors. You see the angle? That's what I was telling you about on the diagonal angle. Lock, unlock, real nice, easy to use. Close this back up. We have our M logo on the leather shifter for that ZF 8-speed and the colors in the stitching. We have our new iDrive 8 direct drive control knob. You have your bright red start stop button. M mode, you could open and close the active exhaust at will. And then you're gonna have a semi-soft leather on the armrest with the stitching. Open it up, we got another USB-C. And you have enough room in here, I would say to put eight GoBots. So I don't know about transformer size, but a lot of people forget about the GoBots. I wonder if Michael Bay is gonna create a crazy GoBots movie. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Or maybe a different director that isn't so over the top. Seats, nice leather, love the M colors with the M2 logo. Look at the great bolstering and how those colors just all flow in nicely. You do have electric assist for the passenger with your manual ham string extension for your lower legs. You see that's manual. You can have it out here, you can have it in here. The only thing is if you're picking up a hot date, make sure you vacuum in here because there could be crumbs and you don't want your hot date to get grossed out. That's not gonna make for a very good date. Now there are performance seats you could get that shave 28 pounds if you could believe that. And even though this is the M2 and it's smaller than the M3 and the M4, I still got plenty of headroom. Get your helmet on for your track day, your autocross event, or take the helmet off and rip it through your favorite twisty bits. But why don't you go ahead, get your butt over here. I wanna show you behind this carbon fiber and leather steering wheel in this BMW M2. Right, guys, behind the business end, the wheel of this M2, I love the nice ginormous sill plate with the M2 badge. Let you know you did it right every time you get in and out. Pedal box, perfect. Aluminum dead pedal, good size, brake pedal and throttle. Me personally, I would option this with the triple pedal to get that six speed manual. But other than that, they did a great job with the pedal box. You have all your seat controls easy to get to. You could adjust the bolstering, the lower lumbar, the mid lumbar, and everything else very nicely. I'm six feet tall, and I just feel really wrapped nicely in this M2 steering wheel. They do a great job at BMW. The leather, look at the motorsport coloring all the way through. There's that carbon fiber with the M badge, more carbon fiber. You have your M buttons for your save preferences, and then you have surfboard style, carbon fiber surfboards, to say the least of these paddles to go up and down that eight-speed automatic transmission. And we have a manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. The one thing I'm not in love with is how the 
digital screens are. You do have a nice size digital gauge clusters, 12.3 inch. It does change depending on what mode you go in. So their sport mode changes a little bit. And then I'll go ahead and put it into road mode. I like the way they don't have a normal. There is your road mode. And if you notice at the tire uh, air pressure sensors there, it also tells you temp, which is really good, especially when you're doing the track day. And what's great is, is that you could actually change any of this information at any time. So you could go to different content in that center display, G meter, the whole nine yards, all easy peasy. And then for me, we're going back into track because I'm shutting off all those nannies. Activate, boom. And then one thing that's really awesome is they have an amazing head up display, nice and large with shift lights and a full tack there, which is great. But why don't we go ahead, I'm gonna do it just for you. Let's get into the back seat and see if you could share this vehicle with more of your friends as you're going through the twisty bits in the M2. All right, guys, here we are in the back seat of the M2. Now, I'll be honest, getting into the back seat is probably the most challenging part of the whole deal. Once you get in, it's actually not too shabby. You actually have more room than a Camaro for sure. I think more room back here than a Mustang GT not as much room as a Challenger. Challenger, much bigger vehicle, but it's not too shabby. And the fact that you could share the fun with more of your family and friends and let them know what the motorsport badge is all about, the true motorsport badge in this M2, I think it's not too bad. You got rear AC, that's hard for me to show you. You also have uh, the controls for that, all easy and a nice place to put, I would say, three Twinkies back here. So you could actually have two people sit back here, but three Twinkies in case one of them gets a little extra hungry. And one thing I wanna show you that's actually on all the seatbelts is you have the motorsport colors, the three colors on the seatbelt that's worth an extra five horsepower. But while we go ahead, we have a trunk. And once we get done with that, we're going on throttle in this M2. Let's get to it. Hey guys, one of the things that's gonna surprise the heck out of you is that you actually have, even though this is a, a smaller vehicle and the smallest of the M cars currently available. Wait until you see the trunk space. You hit the button, no electric assist, but it's not a big deal to lift up. You're gonna be greeted to a little over 14 cubic feet of space, nice low cargo floor. You do have your Norschleife Twinkie holder over here. Put a box of Twinkies, get rid of this. Put a box of Twinkies over there. The rear seats do fold, which is a nice touch. And obviously, this helps with bringing that versatility to make this a great daily performance car driver. But the way to find out about performance is to go on throttle. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's get into this, what I think, ultimate driving machine and see how the on throttle goes. Let's get to it. All right, guys, we are inside this redesigned BMW M2. I have everything in track mode and we're gonna rock and roll and use these carbon fiber paddles surfboard style to go up and down that ZF eight speed automatic. But if you're ready, I'm ready. On throttle, here we go. Yeah. The thrust from that straight six twin turbos. There we go. The transmission shifts so purposeful. It's like a horse kicking you in your back. Nice, balanced, rear-wheel drive platform. <laughs> this thing is a lightning bolt. All right, let's talk about what the heck is going on here. First of all, I really think they've done it. They have brought back fully the ultimate driving machine connected to my frontal lobe and all the other parts of my brain, the steering wheel to the front wheels, and the way it gets the traction down, so purposeful, very precise. Looking out across the hood, you got a great visual reference point. Out the back, it's not too bad. If you don't have anybody sitting in the back seat, you got pretty good visibility, but the side mirrors, like I pointed out earlier, look so aerodynamically refined, but works so well. And then it's really up to you 
how you feel about the infotainment system and the digital gauge display. I'll tell you this about the digital gauge display. Absolutely love the way the gear indicator is top dead center, depending on what mode you're in. I like the way there's that little angle to the tachometer, and really everything else is actually laid out very cleanly in here and makes sense. Even though this does not have the optional race seats which save you over 20 pounds like I mentioned before, these seats are superb for everyday living and then you can adjust them infinitely to really kind of make the bolstering feel comfortable for you but still hold you in nicely. But I would be lying if I said that I did not want the race seats. I want the race seats, I want a six speed manual, but to me, this is what BMW is all about. I remember back in the day with two door M3s, there was no M4, now everything has gotten larger and this really has stayed true to that original formula that was created so many years ago, but once again, we gotta do it. On throttle, here we go, nice. This thing is a freaking pit bull. Or I should say a German Shepherd. On the brakes, slowing us down like a, like a freaking German Shepherd sheds hair. The turning is so quick. It's like you think it and you're done. Nice and balanced. It's like you can feel that extra width of the tires from the extra wide body flares giving you nice sticky rubber to keep you planted to the ground. And then there's no denying the ZF 8-speed automatic. Uh, it's not a dual clutch, but it's lightning fast and it's been that way for years now. So I'm not surprised by that, that whatsoever. You know, sometimes when you create a new generation, things can go wrong. I think this one is spot on the money. On throttle, here we go. I love the way it's rear wheel drive. It just fires off through those freaking gears. The brakes, nice and balanced. Look at this. And I'm not white knuckling anything. I think that's the other fine point in all of this is that, yeah, the car handles, no doubt about that. Yeah, this chassis is balanced and like blueprinted. Not that the previous generation was garbage, but it really builds upon that. But I don't have to white knuckle the whole time. I really feel good. I feel comfortable. I feel confident. And that's what you want when you're going through the twisty bits or driving every day to work or taking this thing to a track day. I mean, that's the type of Swiss army knife that this vehicle is. Very sharp, very precise. Obviously sound is being pumped in besides some of the sound out of the exhaust. It's not as synthetic sounding as previous years. So I'm happy to report that, but I know that it is fake. So my brain is kind of taking that information and, and not believing it 100%, but it still sounds very, very clear no matter what rev you're at, no matter what the revs are at. Let's talk about the head up display. I'm so glad it's there and I'm glad that they just kept it simple. Have that nice, tachometer across the top, your gear indicator, a couple other pieces of information, and that's it. That's all I need. But I love how everything is laid out in this cockpit. Very, very comfy. I just, the only thing is I want one with a manual. I want one with a manual, and I want it now. I guess the biggest zonk that I'm feeling that I'm when I'm driving is because of all that carbon fiber and because of the gloss finish on it, it does create a bit of glare at times. And if you're doing a track day or an autocross event or even ripping through your favorite twisty bits, that could be a little annoying. The screens, I mean, they did it right by bending it 
towards the driver, especially that infotainment system screen, having it bend out a little bit. But uh, other than that, you know, I think it's as good as it's gonna get screen-wise uh, wise in today's setup. All right, guys, I can't get enough of the revs in this thing or the on-throttle. Let's do it. On-throttle, here we go. The shifts on the brakes. Look at this, so balanced. Just rockets out of the turn. <laughs> yes! Upshifts and downshifts are just so freaking fast in this. And I'm loving the work that they did to the chassis. Yes, an M3 has more horsepower. An M4 has more horsepower. There's a lot of other cars that have more horsepower. It's all about the balance, and I really think that they moved each of the parameters very wisely, being very intuitive about what they're doing, so that it feels intuitive while you're driving the car. And that's how it should be. That's why BMW, the ultimate driving machine. All right, guys, one more time for me, definitely. Definitely one more time for you. You guys deserve it. I'm telling you, this M2 is freaking killer. Are you ready? On throttle, here we go. <laughs> I love this rear wheel drive fun. So playful. You're able to square off the corner so nicely. Now it just attacks the apex. And then you know what? When you're just driving around, it's nice, comfortable. You can make it more aggressive, less aggressive, and everything in between. This is what I remember of BMW, and uh, this makes me smile that this car exists. But uh, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that this really gave you a great idea about what the M2 is bringing for this all new redesign. We're gonna get back and wrap this one up. So I'll see you in a split second. Hi guys, it's been a rip roaring on throttle kind of day with this M2. Definitely gotta thank the whole BMW USA team for allowing us access to this press vehicle. So let me know what you think down in that comment section. Is this the return of the ultimate driving machine? Like those earlier days of the M3? Or are you gonna go somewhere else with your performance car money and you don't think that this brings the value? Let me know down in that comment section. But if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. Of course, we need to give it up to Stephen Flood, Stephen Flood Photography, working that camera like a champ. Show him some love in the comment section. Thank you, Stephen, for all that you do. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.